Ha ha! It worked! I caught you this time. Hey everyone, this is Tappers here, and welcome to a surprising and unexpected uh, let's play of a PC game of old. You can't really see it, but um, this is actually being played on a program called Scum VM. It's a program that allows you to record old PC games, like this one, created by Cocktail Vision 1993, Goblins 3. Now, you might be wondering, why am I playing a third game? Well, actually this is the third game of the Goblins series, but the biggest difference that puts this apart from everything else in the series is that this one only has one eye, compared to like three eyes. Because it's like goblins, and then either a one, nothing, or some weird prefix. But this one's Goblins Quest 3, which is kind of weird how it works. But um, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I'll hopefully talk about this game a little bit. That's the password protection or something, so you don't have to worry about that. Also, the sounds can be loud in a way. But um, starting off the game, it's a point-and-click adventure. Uh, and you get to control this guy, Blount. He's a goblin for the uh, Goblin News, uh, as stated there. And if we go here to the news, we get to learn a little bit about uh, the setting and the plot. Using the Gelodon method, learn to speak Gelodian in one night. Impossible mission. I am Blount, your faithful reporter, and I am starting the fabulous trip to the foreign con try of okay of philander i'm <laughs> i could make a joke there but i'm not gonna uh i promise i will bring back an interview of queen xena and king bod who are enemies and he's going to cobland to get some corn on no that's gobland but uh yeah so how does it work we get to move around you get to hear the weird little sound effects, and we're also seeing some clouds uh, flying by. We're on a ship, and we're actually falling. I mean, you wouldn't really know this unless you play the CD version of this game, but uh, the only thing I have to say about this uh, the CD version is I'm not playing it. Also, the music isn't exactly the same as... The original. I'm not sure if Scum MV can't like get the soundtrack working, but uh, anyway, let's start the game. So, hey, we got a golf club. We pick something up, and Blount does a backflip because that's kind of how it works. Um, you notice that there was a little symbol, like these uh, circles around an arrow. That means you have an item that you can use. So if you like click somewhere that um, is unoccupied or something, you might use it, and he just swings at thin air. We also have a coin, which is a trusty coin. I'm gonna call Tails. Hey, nice, I called it. Uh, we also have, what's this, a screw? What is that holding? Oh, he just leans in. It's a hook for the ropes. A screw is holding it. Yeah, I, okay, I almost read that wrong, but uh, yeah, I guess we're not gonna do anything about that because we have an important task being I must leave this ship with the barrel that is at the stern. Uh, wh why? There's a parachute right there, Blout. Just take it. If you need to flee this ship, I'm sure nothing will... Well... God damn it. Blount? What are you... Uh, uh-oh. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, there's some really weird humor here, so um, get used to that when it comes to uh, Goblins 3. But hey, let's go golfing. I'm sure this will go over very well. Nope, I don't know how to golf, clearly. Yeah, and if something happens, he'll, you usually hear him complain, so there's that. So we have to get off this ship somehow, and we need to go on this barrel. We can't take a parachute like that mouse is doing, but, um, can we do anything about that? Well, there's a hole. There's a rope. I must find something to cut the rope that holds this barrel. Hmm. I wonder how. Well, 
Oh yeah, you need to hold them. You have to have the mouse point over to the sides in order to scroll the screen. It's a little awkward on these windows because you can do it better on the right. I don't know what this thing is. It looks like it's detached. But if you try doing it on the left, you kind of have to jiggle it a bit in order to refocus. So it's a little awkward. But um, yeah, we can't really escape, or we can't do anything right now. But hmm, can we have a coin? Can we unscrew it with that? Naturally, we can. Also, very weird sound effects whenever things like fall and land and stuff. So yeah, hmm. There's a there's a hoop here. Or, I'm sorry, a loop. I wonder if we can put a hook there. Oh yeah, we can do that. And there's a weight, and there's also a rope. Hmm. I wonder if this I wonder if these have anything to do with lowering that hook. Well, there's a bell. And he became a pasture. He is Father Blount. And Apparently, it's supposed to be a reference to something. I don't really know. It could be a fourth wall thing, but yeah. So maybe this... Oh yeah, hey, the weight actually lifts that down and... Unfortunately, we can't catch the umbrella because we need some help. Hmm. Oh, what's this? A flagstone? That It looks definitely weird when you compare it to all the other stone steps. Did you see that? The hand moved over here. So, you have to ask yourself, well, okay, so you get to stand on the hand, but now how do you get there? In fact, how do you get to the tooth? Well, we need somebody to push him up there. But here's the problem. Uh, if you actually see the intro in the movie thing, everybody's abandoning ship, which is not very many, and I still wouldn't wish anybody to watch it, so, uh, yeah. Uh, well, we need to find somebody. Maybe somebody's in the door. Oh, uh, are you sure you're not? Oh, okay. I'm not really sure how it works, because it's like the dimensions kind of like go under here and maybe up a stairs or something. I don't even know. But if you look closely, there's a knot. Maybe there's, uh, somebody on the fourth wall that will be able to help... Oh, it's a parrot in a jar. <laughs> what do you know? This might be useful or whatever. Maybe he can help. I'm sure a bird is a trusty companion. His name is Chump. The sailors locked him up because he was impossible. And you could technically talk to him again, maybe hope he'd say something different, but uh, he doesn't say anything different here. Because, well, we're going to hit him with a golf club, and we're going to unstock him, but get him stuck in somewhere else. Hmm. But I'm sure we'll have a way of helping him again. Uh, I was clicking on a hole, Blount. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can go there. Chump offers to help if I can get him out of here. Out of there. Well, I'm sure that's easy. Let's just use the trusty golf club again, and... Yeah, he doesn't let you hit him again, because either he's learned from past mistakes, or because he actually would just go tumbling off the ship. But I'm sure a parrot can fly... Well, maybe not. At least, not this one. So, how else are we going to get him out? Well... There's a toolbox here, and if we inspect it, we get, well, we get some pepper. Hmm, wonder if we can sneeze him out of there. Uh, spoiler, no, that won't work. What else is, oh, hey, it's a plunger. Wonder if he can, I'm not sure I would use that, especially if somebody was given a wet willy or something. I don't know, but let's check again, and... Yeah, don't be greedy. Yeah, that's all there is left in there. Just traps for the mice, which were... They're completely useless since they're all retreating. All 
170,000 of them that are stuck in that little hole right there. So, we gotta think, how can we use the plunger? Oh yeah, we can just suck, uh, chump out, and he's kind of clumsy and just very short-minded. So, we can actually now control secondary partner, and his name is Chump. And he makes musical steps for some really weird reason. <laughs> but, um, actually, so here's something I'm going to show you. Um, if you have Chump, see, you'll know you're selected on somebody if they're turned sideways. The ones that are uh, inactive will be looking straight at you. And Chump has no hands, so uh, he also has no inventory. So if you were to think, oh, maybe we can have Blount um, grab the weight and Chump can get the parasol, well, the answer is, he'll just be like, uh, what am I supposed to do? Uh, so what we need to do is have them switch places and have Blount actually catch the umbrella because, um, yeah, Chump can actually hold up the weight and his cheeks puff up red, so there's that. So, now we gotta wonder, how do we get this? Well, we know we have to put somebody on top of a hand because they're gonna get springboarded. So let's have Chump try to do that because I'm sure as a bird he'll fly up really high and then have Blount launch Chump all the way up. Or Chump can just fall straight forward. No, we actually have to have Chump activate the flagstone and by absolute genius physics, well, he launches himself up very high and yeah, we got the tooth. So we actually have like six items just from this one area, although we had probably like, what, seven or eight that I can't think of? No, actually we had seven. So now we gotta get down and he just defies physics, don't ask. And um, yeah, so actually we have everything we need. This is a pretty easy and short level. So now we need to get everybody into the barrel. Uh, okay, I didn't have it right. So let's get Chump inside the barrel. Or maybe not. I guess he's not coming with us. Well, that's too bad. I didn't also. I also didn't show a few other things. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, this is Joker's. Now, you get five jokers in the game, and apparently they're supposed to tell you, like, how to clear an entire screen or whatever. Uh, and I will not be using them. I, I forgot to mention that, as far as this game's concerned, I still remember parts of it. But once I get to a certain point, I'm not going to remember anything or be floundering around. So, I might be cutting this into segments of each uh, screen. You might be wondering how many screens are there. Well, um, this is where we are, right here on a ship, and that is uh, Chump. Where we go to next, uh, who knows, you'll maybe find out. But I think there's 19 screens total, and it'll tell you, uh, Blount must free Chump, then find the way to leave the ship, to leave the flying ship aboard the barrel. So, uh, I also should mention, uh, there's options for music, uh, which turns it off. Uh, info, date, time, yeah, I'm recording this on the 23rd of February, and haven't been playing too long, I don't think. Let's turn the music back on, and it resets. Uh, management, we have a save, a load, a quit, and a version. Um, yeah, this was 1993. This was just before Cocktail Vision became a part of Sierra Entertainment, or were acquired by, but anyway. Let's go ahead and leave this ship. Uh, go to the barrel. Yeah, it's really finicky sometimes. Like, certain things should be where they should, but they aren't. So, let's use this on the rope. 
Or not. It would be better if I hang an umbrella on this barrel. Yeah, this is going to be our parachute because, well, the other one went bye-bye and I'm pretty sure the mice parachutes won't work. Not even for Chump because he's too heavy. But yeah, let's go ahead and escape. What could possibly go wrong with this idea? We. Oh, hey! It actually acts like a parachute. This is actually going smooth. Oh. Boily Coyote physics! And, yep, we're dead. But, actually, we're not. We're inside a hole. We survived. I think all our teeth are intact. And, aside from a concussion. But, yeah, we just now cleared the first screen, and now we're off to, uh, the Clash of Demon Head, or something like that. Um, I, this is another piece of music I like. Um, I should probably cut this segment since I do want to save and make sure things go all right. There's a bunch of... Oh, yeah, I should show what the save feature looks like. Um, uh, save? <laughs> I don't know why it wasn't working. But uh, next time, we will uh, see what sort of clash demon head nonsense this is. Um, so this is Tapris, and I'll uh, see you in a moment. Come on, mouse.